Remember who you are. And start to destroy the destructive person that they made you out to become. What I mean by that is society, your family, even friends, teachers, your spouse, people close to you. They can change you, even if they don't mean to, you can allow them to. It's called dogma. And what I believe dogma does is it ruins authenticity. It crushes pure, unique spirits. And it turns them into whatever and whomever this new recreation of you is that's not the person you were absolutely destined to become. Sometimes you got to reach deep inside your soul. Remember the days when you dreamt about the things you have now and remember who you were. Remember what lit you up inside. Remember that free-spirited human that you were. Let go. Let go of any built-up resentment, regret, fear, doubt, hate, malice, strife. Any negative attributes, they will hold you back. You need to develop an optimistic, positive mind. It's not easy, especially if you're raised in a pessimistic household. And it's not your parents' fault, even if, if you were. Literally, I'm not gonna get into details, but like I've spoken to people and they said, it's how their parents raised them. And I've heard speeches and read books as well and it's just facts so don't play the blame game either it's not your parents fault it's not their fault his fault whoever's fault you got to take control of your mind and that is not easy that develops a true sense of willpower and character and dignity and a sense of discipline like no other because guess what diligence diligence is not the magic formula yeah, diligence is great. Hard work can produce a great physique. Hard work can get shit done. But hard work is not the definition for success. There are four attributes. I got this from Ty Lopez, and I, I'll never forget the four. And I've, I've pressed them for 15 fucking years since I saw Ty in his garage with his fucking Lamborghinis and his bookshelves. I was inspired. Other people literally would talk to me back then about Ty and say, look at this guy. Jealous. But I was inspired. And there's another quote I just thought of, of him. I will say that one first, that formal education, formal, formal education will make you a living, or can make you a living, but self-education and make you a fortune. And now back to the four attributes. Diligence, hard work. But if hard work was the secret, wouldn't the construction maker make the most money? And yes, I'm repeating words I've heard. I'm not claiming all of this. This is stuff that is been programmed into my brain because I study successful people because I want to be financially stable for the inflammation or inflation rising. I want to be the respected father someday that can hand down a business to my son 
I deserve everything that I have visualized for my life. And if you don't develop that mindset, you're going to fall into the fucking rat race. You're going to fall into that pessimistic, victimized mindset where you think everything and everyone owes you something. The government's out to get you. Uh, you know, you just, you're constantly complaining. Complaining gets you nowhere. Complaining fixes nothing. It does not produce revenue. It doesn't make you any more healthy. It doesn't fit, make your body fit. Complaining is a drug and it's a bad fucking drug. Complaining will put you many, many steps back. It will prevent you from moving forward because you're living in a state of just being ungrateful. That's the truth. People who complain do not have a true sense of gratitude. I, I'm going to say that straight up. I believe it because somebody who is walking with God, somebody who is truly grateful for everything in their fucking life and every human in their life who treats them right with respect. They don't complain. They don't blame. They wake up every day and thank God just to open their eyes one more day. They thank God to take another breath. And they don't say, I have to. I have to? You have to do this? No, I get to. When you change your I have to's to I get to, watch how your life changes. When you realize that you get to do things instead of make it such a big task, I have to do this workout, no. I deserve to live in a fit, healthy body that I love looking at in the mirror every single day. I have to do laundry today. I have to clean my room. No, I deserve to live in a clean environment. I, de I deserve to have clean surroundings to keep my mind right, to have cleanliness, to not get sick. I get to. Change your I have to's to I get to's and it produces a real sense of gratitude and not that somebody who says I have to do something doesn't isn't grateful for anything it's the fact that when you truly grasp the concept that everything is a fucking miracle that, that you don't complain anymore and you just do things with all your heart with all your fucking passion you know people can't take that from you they can't take effort they can't take will and Nobody can take your connection with God. And you know what? I, I told myself I wouldn't talk much about religion on here, man, but I can't help it now. I fucking have cried literally like 50 times in the last week. And if I was to thoroughly delineate every single situation, everything I've felt, every thing I've believed and went through this past month or six months or more, whatever, but I just don't, how can you not, how can you not believe in God? So put your shoes or your slippers way under your bed tonight. Denzel Washington said this. So when you wake up in the morning, you got to get on your knees to get them. And you know, you don't have to be that religious to the point where you're on your knees and praying every single day or say grace or whatever at meals. I'm not gonna press, you know, religious beliefs upon people, but take the fucking second in the morning to just thank the universe or whatever, just to wake up and just be grateful. <laughs> that in itself changes your mindset for the better, to produce a better, happier, more lively, 
better finances, better choices, because your choices are determined by your thoughts and how your thoughts are processed or how they how they click into your mind, I guess I could word it as, is what you listen to and program your mind to believe every single day. And I truly believe this. If you listen to motivational speeches every fucking day, it's gonna make you motivated. It's gonna make you wanna fucking train. If you're listening to, you know, just like, heavy, heavy fucking angry fucking shit. <laughs> I can't think of a way to word this. Just like people complain. It's perfect, perfect. It doesn't need to be a, a, a video or anything. If you're listening to other people complain about everything and other people too, that shit rubs off. It's facts. Positivity doesn't rub off as much as negativity does. Pessimism, oof, it's tough because yeah, we live in a very crazy world, tons of unfortunate circumstances, conflicts, tragedies, minor, minor, minor problems. And here's the big, big key. When these minor problems arise, you must see them just as that. My grandma gave me this book before she passed away. <sighs> Fuck. Called Don't Sweat the Small Stuff. Don't let the fucking petty things get to you. Don't cry over spilled blueberries. <sighs> you spill the blueberries, you process it. You know, maybe you can say, Fuck, ah. But don't freak the fuck out. Don't let it ruin your little happy world. Don't blame anybody for it. Don't punch a wall. Don't curb stomp the blueberries. Don't yell at the blueberries. The blueberries didn't do anything. It's not their fault. If you can learn to process your thoughts and think, think before you react huge it's called the pause it's called the pause because you take a second and you pause and you think about what the fuck you're gonna say even if it's a couple milliseconds that's enough time for most of people to hold back on something you know sometimes you want to react harshly but you know you shouldn't deep down, but you just react. But if you develop a mind that can stop, process, think about the outcomes. If I do this for this happening, is it going to help any way, shape, or form, or is it going to make things worse? If it's going to make things worse, don't fucking do it. And what's the point of complaining about it? What's the point of worrying, stressing? You're literally just imagining things that may or may not occur in the future. So, why not dwell upon great things happening in the future? Why not envision miracles and the most majestic things that you never could have even fathomed for your future now? Why aren't you worthy? Why am I not worthy? We are. That's, that's the fact of the matter. We all fucking are. And we weren't born to just survive. We were born to thrive. As human beings, we were not meant to live a mundane life. We weren't meant to eat processed, high sugary foods and not be mobile or active. That one thing, did somebody say something bad? Kev blocked somebody, I missed it. I'm glad I missed it, because that probably would have pissed me off. <sighs> How bad was it? I don't care. See, this is another thing. I'll change topics. 
I end my streams, and I have it on the back of my sweatshirt with, don't listen to the haters, my mans. They are secretly your biggest fans. Trust the process, stay clear. Naysayers are everywhere. Persevere. And I say that because it's the realest thing you'll ever hear. Unfortunately, the haters or naysayers, the keyboard warriors, the people who try to drag the ones who are going after their goals and dreams, the people who try to drag them down, the people who put them down, criticize them, laugh at them, mock them, judge them, make fun of them, talk about them behind their backs to others. These people are below them. They gave up on their dreams, and when they see you going after yours, it reminds them of when they gave up, and it hurts. It does, and they don't know how to deal with that, other than trying to bring people down to the way that they are feeling inside as well. And I want those people to start to love themselves again as well and realize that it's never too fucking late. It's never too late to start something. Colonel fucking Sanders, Colonel Sanders started KFC at like 72 and became like a billionaire, millionaire, whatever, in his 70s. A lot, a lot of the greats were past their 30s, into their 40s, 50s even, before they even became known for anything or anybody. So when you start to think, oh, I'm too old, or oh, I let too much time waste away, oh, I, I'm too far down the rabbit hole, I never can come back from this slump I'm in. No, it's not too fucking late, you're not too old, and the time is now. It's time to get up. It's time to start believing in ourselves. It's time to start encouraging ourselves, even complimenting ourselves. It does not make you arrogant or cocky. It does not make you cocky to compliment yourself, to fucking engage in self-care and self-love tendencies. You have to take care of your body. If you want to take care of others properly, put yourself first. Stretch your body, train your body, put healthy, nutritious meals into your body. Take care of your surroundings, your environment, and the people you love. Walk by faith, not by sight. And always know that this too shall pass. This too shall pass. So if things are tough right now, realize it's temporary. This too shall pass. But if things are amazing, you're living in a perfect little happy world right now, well, you better be prepared. And you better keep that fucking warrior mentality and realize that this too shall pass also. You are the creator of your life. You are the manifester. You are the writer. So pick up your pen and write your fucking script. You are the director. You are the producer. You are the author. And don't let anybody tell you that you can, you can't do something. Don't let them tell you that, because they will. Small minds will discourage big ideas and big dreams because they are unfathom unfathomable and completely out of reach for them. Their mind can't stretch that far. They know that they don't have the power to put in the necessary sacrifices. They don't have the pain tolerance to be able to endure the pain, the high repetition sets and the heavy weight that it takes to, to grow the muscle maturity. We went back into bodybuilding. Obviously, this isn't regarding every aspect of life anymore, but you know, this is one of my main purposes. So you need to take the time 
develop the habits, develop the routines for whatever it is that you seek, not fitness wise, you know, not finances even. Find what you love. The only way you're going to find that is by looking inside, trying new things, and discovering or rediscovering what lights you up, what ignites your spark, what makes your eyes stay open, what makes you talk to people with pure heart and truly listen. What is your purpose for being on this planet? Why did you wake up today? And if you were to leave this planet tomorrow, would you truly be proud of the legacy you're living and what you did yesterday? We only have so many tomorrows. So I try to live my life like it could be my last day. Because one day it will. And I don't want to be remembered for being a quitter. I don't want to be remembered for half-assing shit. I was not born with half a heart. I am a Spartan warrior. I was born to be great. I am a natural born leader. And I was born to make a difference. I was born to lift others up. I was born to show people what they can be, to represent possibilities. Ideas, dreams, and goals. That were once unfathomable to other minds other than myself. But I swear, I envisioned it, I saw it in my head every single day since I was a teenager. I knew it before it occurred. And that is our most powerful assets. That is our most powerful asset as a human being. The power of visualization. With visualization, we have the capability to be whatever we want to be. Lions can only be lions. Dogs can only be dogs. But human beings, human beings, remarkable, adaptive, special creatures. I'm starting to see the power of my true capabilities again. When you get bold, you have to be bold, by the way, to be great. You have to be bold, courageous, brave. But sometimes when you do act bold, rediscover your confidence, Start talking from your heart, not holding back in fear of what they will say or think or and you lose all that. But by doing so, a lot of people will see it as arrogance. They will see it as cockiness. They will see it like you don't have humility. But you need to realize that these people are irrelevant. These people do not matter, for your life at least. I'm not saying these people have no meaning or purpose. Everybody does. I'm saying that they have zero meaning in your life. And you either need to let them go, 
or you need to make them realize that it's time for big fucking changes. Massive, life-changing, out of this fucking world changes. When you think this big, when you talk this big, it makes small minds uncomfortable. <laughs> it makes most people think you're crazy or that you're just talking out your ass. But then, when your results, when your results speak for themselves, what can they say now? Let your results speak for themselves. So don't talk about it always. Fucking be about it. And wake up one day and let your results just illuminate and radiate through everybody. Let them speak volumes. Let them speak for themselves. Because the proof is always in the pudding. You can't fake results. Sometimes you gotta, sometimes you gotta move on. It hurts, it will. But I promise, bros, if you have a vision for your future, look how big it is. If it's burning inside you, don't fucking let it go out.